you guys probably saw the release. He's got a grade one MCL sprain, and um, mechanically the knee's intact, so that's that's good. So it's one of those things where we attempted to put a timetable on it, which is two weeks. We're going to reevaluate it, but we'll know a little bit more uh, hopefully after the first week. It's it's how his body responds to rest, treatment, things like that. There's no nothing surgical needed, and um, like I said, it's unfortunate, but. We got a game in two days, and we'll focus on that, and um, we'll move forward the best we can. Uh, what are the treatment options? Do you have PRP? You know, we're exploring different things as far as treatment options, but at this time, it's just rest, ice, things like that. Nothing, um, nothing we haven't all seen before. Uh, in, in the, ten years ago, they would have called this a knee sprain, and you take some, some you know, aspirin or whatever and play. But obviously, everything's so much more sophisticated now. You can characterize it much more specifically as a, an MCL grade one. So I was with him at the MRI today and he, uh, he was pleased uh, at, the, at the outcome. And so he's focused on getting back as, as soon as he can. Well, I know time gets picked up, but when you say reevaluate in two weeks, does, it, does that mean he is not playing? Absolutely not until May 9th, the earliest, or is there some little room there? Yeah, I think, ab Tim, absolutely. It's, it's, with injuries, it's hard to really ascertain when he'll be back. Uh, he won't play Wednesday, that's for sure. And we put the two-week timeline on it because historically a grade one MCL is anywhere in that two to three week range. So we took a, to be honest, an educated guess because it's it's unclear as to whether a player is ready in two weeks or three or later or sooner. Um, but we know in this day and age, people want timelines, we want them too. So we said two weeks, but that's no guarantee that it will be in two weeks, might be after two weeks, might be before. Uh, but I think it'll be somewhere in that range, hopefully. At this point, it's just a guess. Can he do any conditioning stuff at all? Not right now. I mean, he's pretty sore right now. But hopefully, if he's going to get back to playing, that'll that'll come in the first week or relatively shortly thereafter. But um, not not right now. He's not not going to condition today or anything like that. Bike or anything like that. Um, I don't know how soon he'd bike. Um, again, it's one of those things where his body will dictate what he's capable of doing. But the good thing is, is he's not unstable. It's mechanically sound. Um, so you're able to explore different things and see how your body reacts, but we're not gonna throw him into environments that he's not uncomfortable, that he's uncomfortable in. Bobby, you were there for the MRI, you are there trailing him as he walked off the court. What have been the emotions of this for, for you and just you and how everyone's reacted to this? You know, he's a different guy. I mean, he's a, he is, to me, I have the highest level of respect for Steph, and so, and I talked to Steve last night. Ultimately, um, I feel bad for him as a person because he does everything the right way. He embodies what's good about athletes, what's good about the NBA. And when you see an athlete, when you see someone you know, that what they love to do, they're not capable of doing, it's, there's a sadness, right? I mean, and so that's what I felt for him. Um, and I think his teammates showed how much they care with how they played. But nobody deserves to get hurt. Getting hurt is awful. But, yeah, I mean, he's, in my eyes, he's a unique athlete, he's a unique person. So I am, it was hard to see. It's hard to see. Do you expect him to travel for uh, the playoff game? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to guess as to when we'll be traveling or who we'll be playing. But we play Wednesday and he'll be here. Um, beyond that, I don't even, haven't thought about it really.